Sunday, 7th <coughs> November 2021, weekly meeting of Silos Message. The topic is approaching the topic of profound, how people have different images and ideas of it. Ajit. Well, uh, there may be some questions that we may want to ask Anton Antonio about uh, the profound. And uh, that would kind of lay the agenda for today's meeting because he would be able to understand what our needs are regarding that. And I think that's very important that it answers what we want. So like, we would like to ask him some questions. So can, can, can people get these questions together? Uh, one obvious thing is what is the profound? What do we mean by the profound? So he's taken the topic of approaching the profound. So what is that we are trying to approach? Is that okay? We can discuss, no? I, for some reason, you're muted, Sudhir. <coughs> yeah, I said I will write all the questions that people keep asking in the chat so that uh, we have them ready. So I started with uh, what is the profound and what is that we are trying to approach in the sense of what is that we are trying to approach. What does the profound have to do with our daily lives? How does the profound influence and impact our lives? Can anybody else contribute please? Can you please repeat the questions, Ajit? What is the profound? <clears throat> uh, what is the profound? That What is that which we call the profound? That which we are trying to approach. As, may, may I? If you're Ajit asking me. a question, please, please. Uh, as per my understanding, uh, profound is an exceptional uh, uh, state of experience, and uh, uh, that experience is not our regular, regular kind of uh, uh, experience uh, made by our senses or our representations. Representation. Mm. Uh, That's quite right, by well, quite right. Yes, where, is the where there, is, there is no, uh, there is no uh, uh, sensation data and there is no uh, memory data and uh, there is no uh, representation data. And uh, it is a, uh, uh, if uh, all these attributes are not there, uh, when we experiencing this void, after coming back, uh, we will have a we will have only a climate of that, and we don't have a, a recording or memory of that. As per my understanding, it is an uh, it is uh, the, that kind of experience. That is one and all experience. Without memory. Ah, without memory also. Memory. Uh, then how uh, how they can uh, explain it or. Uh... They, they are actually, already having the memory, no? Actually, uh, it is a state where uh, I is suspended. There is no I. Yeah. Your, your 
you are <laughs> highly professional <laughs> way of explanation so very difficult to understand actually these contributions can come during the discussion with antonio right now i'm just raising some questions to him okay my question my question is that uh, uh, normally we have been uh, reading or we have been hearing particularly in india in a spiritual field there is a term uh, revelation there is a term liberation there is a term uh, mukta like many terms uh, we heard but uh, uh, that that is a concept or experience of a particular person in in a, in a such a level but in 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 that uh, uh, if this is a this is a or a reality or a something is it any connection with this so called uh, these things in uh, spirituality is it a connection with uh, the profound we we say we say any connection or the same or uh, that is a thing that is my question we can raise this when when the matter <clears throat> of personal experience comes uh, suppose uh, when we are uh, uh, when we are asking the uh, experience of uh, love or asking the experience of uh, uh, our personal experience whatever experience it is uh, in theory uh, we can't uh, we, we can express only in words but we can't uh, we can't exactly say what is the experience like but in the, uh, but it will uh, be there in uh, in that particular person's memory no that uh, ah it is it is uh, suppose when we are when uh, when we are talking about love a, it's a, it's an end a personal experience and my experience and uh, your experience yeah. uh, it, but, it, it won't uh, it, it won't match but but the love is a common experience of everybody they experience uh, uh, themselves but uh, what this exceptional profound experience uh, what we are talking is an exceptional uh, uh, experience very rarely uh, 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 common to all people uh, very rarely achieved by uh, the, uh, the, uh, all the people around us so while yeah, asking but, the uh, yeah bhai jo what that will be there in in that particular person's memory no is a uh, is experience <coughs> then how are you no, can if, there, there, is, if, if, there is no memory that is as per the understanding what those uh, experienced uh, uh, people's uh, uh, personal uh, 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 words on that experience uh, they are telling that uh, they, uh, they don't have they don't have the uh, memory uh, but they have only a climate climate of uh, what they experienced because it is the suspension of i that the state is uh, the suspension of i there is no uh, i and there is no uh, senses and there is no sense uh, uh, representation on that state uh, you, a lot of uh, this is hearsay what you're saying is hearsay we are taking from yes. other people who have said these things now the thing yes. is that if for sure it's a personal experience for sure it's a personal experience yes and yes. it is a highest experience and anything that you want to describe will come out in words and words yes. have limitation certain types of experiences but words are the only way of transmitting that that experience but it, there is a positive in words like for instance words if you want to explain language as silo says it's difficult because you're trying to explain that which contains itself and so it is with god and so it is with this higher spiritual experiences you know if one has but there is a way to approach it that is important there's a way to prepare yourself to be able to achieve it achieve it in a personal way not in hearsay 
And that is the assesses. That is what is our drive towards uh, experiencing this. And there is a fallout of that. Those fallouts are in the behavior and the actions after that. If it was a true experience and it's a true liberating experience and a true unity of experience, and uh, uh, in which you become more united, in which you become Hi, more. Antonio. Hello, hello. Sorry, Ajit, for interrupting. Hi, Antonio. I'm sorry. I'll just finish this. Part. So, this is the experience which makes you. Uh, it's a different level of experience. This is true. So we don't want hearsay as far as possible. We want to approach this and have our own experience in this. It is a process. It demands some things from us. But let us learn that on the way. You know? That's all that we see. Antonio, we, yeah. we thought we, instead of just saying hi and hello to each other, mm -hmm. which we did for the first 15 minutes, we thought we'll get into the subject itself. Ah, good, and good. Uh, Thank you. Subject, we 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 decided that we'll ask you some questions. And uh, during that uh, session also, th there were some expressions of what could be the profound. Yes. And uh, uh, what Baiju was expressing, we'll ask you to express that. But first, uh, uh, can you can you uh, just uh, read out those uh, questions, uh, Sudhir? I have written them in the chat. Just as a background for like what questions may come up or what's in people's mind. This was largely in my mind, but uh, it was for what general that, question. What is that which we call the profound, that which we are trying to approach? The second is in India, in spiritual context, we hear many terms like liberation, is that connected with the term that we use as profound? And then Baiju had an explanation. Uh -huh. Baiju, would you kindly, uh, kindly share your explanation? Yeah, what I told is uh, it is an exceptional state of uh, cons uh, consciousness uh, where uh, there is no memory, uh, there is no... Uh, uh, act of senses and uh, there is no uh, representation and uh, it is the uh, it is a state called suspension of five so uh, when we come back in in our uh, real life uh, uh, because of there is no recording uh, uh, those people uh, uh, experienced that state they are uh, not uh, able to tell uh, 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 what what it was. That is what I am saying. But they also have a climate, you said. They registered as a climate. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So, Antonio, this is the background. Yes. And uh, we get into it. I think there you are expressing different levels of, uh, of uh, reference to the profound. For example, what uh, Baiju is uh, touching upon is, uh, <clears throat> is that suspension of the eye that, that doesn't allow you to connect with any one of the, of the functions of the normal operation of the psyche. Because you suspend the eye, you suspend the connection with all these functions. And, uh, but on the other hand, there are no clear registers other than the ones described just now that we could use for, uh, for the purposes of this discussion, I think, because many times we refer to the profound in, in sort of less profound levels, if you want. It's, it's clear according to all the uses of the concept that we are referring to the profound whenever we are look within ourselves beyond the more external level of illusions of fantasies of suffering of conflict and uh, normal perceptions in our day-to-day -day life and uh, for example uh, the look within or the inner look whatever we want to call it uh, orientates a whole system of reflections into that field and all the topics that are touched there are associated to the profound. 
but obviously in that, those levels, those gradual levels of depth, you can res rescue these uh, uh, observations and your discoverings. And again, they have a feeling that is quite distinctive and, uh, and uh, they move within, within a, a, an ambit of concerns that is not the external, the day-to-day -day concerns. And I, th I think as long as we are within that ambit of reflection, we are uh, moving in a direction that is very interesting to us all because it's within what we call the internal work. To go beyond, we know that uh, um, in the works of Assessis is, uh, is explained uh, the, the, the technique of suspension of the eye and of course the, the falling into the profound. And as Baiju was saying at that point, one of the indicators that you will have is that you don't have memory and that you will be able perhaps in later times to the, that of the experience, you will be able to recollect occurrences, observations, reflections, feelings, and different things that uh, you didn't know that, that were there, but seems to be the response of that contact that you have established with that very profound level beyond your psyche. But um, for example, we were reviewing uh, last week the mission of the 81. And most of the members of the, of the mission mention that at different uh, points, they had to appeal to an experience uh, that Silo taught them in, uh, in uh, Napoli, in Italy, to resolve or to get inspiration in order to, to be able to build up the speeches in order to be uh, able to, uh, to discover which is the most profound way to connect with the people from heart to heart, to communicate what they wanted to communicate. And he was telling them, uh, produce a very profound relaxation and it's like the prayer of the heart that we do, for example, that we he also mentioned in Parque La Reja when, when the park was inaugurated. And where you try to go to the bottom of your mind, of your heart, and connect with the best and, 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 uh, and more unique of yourself. And at that point, you, you don't know exactly what we are trying to connect, but you know that it's not the day-to-day -day thing. It's not the external. And from there, most of them, Nicole, uh, uh, um, Dani, uh, Petur, uh, started to, to get a level of response, a level of, of uh, intuition. Uh, many times the, the way of formulating something that intellectually they were formulating, but they were not happy with it because it sounded too peripheral. And then they got inspiration. So it seems to be that is a point also where we going beyond the mechanical response of our psyche in our day-to-day -day activity, at the same time that we can produce a confluence between our heart and the most uh, profound of our intellect, because they all manage to formulate the points, the points that they wanted to formulate. And Peter, in three or four of his uh, speeches, he uh, says that... Uh, that he has uh, been teaching the way of going into that level to other people, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and so it's interesting when people make reference to that because it seems to be a very profound space within yourself, but not necessarily that space where there is no formulation and no language and no memory. That is, of course, the most profound of the profound that we can know or understand at this stage. That is what I could uh, just uh, mention in relation to that. So let me add something. Um, I don't have, I don't think that we have in the school as it is uh, configured at the moment, configured because the configuration of the school depends on the internal level of its members. I don't think that there are too many examples of, uh, 
of of a systematic access to the profound in in terms of the material for access assesses in the disciplines. So it seems to be a, a complicated, difficult technique that requires lots of permanence and lots of dedication. And also where you cannot have any sort of guarantee or certainty that you will be able to access every time that you try it because it requires conditions of sort of internal preparation, purification, et cetera. But because we would know about them because it would be a, a a certain type of evidence, and also we would perceive a higher level in the in in the in the school at this stage, which, in my perception, subjective, of course, is not the case. And therefore, uh, I think it's more practical for us to uh, try to approach the profound with a more uh, external uh, concept or aspiration that uh, we were mentioning before. I don't know what you think of that. <laughs> May I raise a question? Yeah. Uh, Antonio, what happens is that uh, we speak about the profound and approaching it, but even in a, if people dear departed pass away, we wish them light in the understanding and on his onward journey to the profound. Yeah. I mean, these are the wishes that are there. But uh, what exactly would this encompass? I mean, is it like the heavens that people talk about? Or is it, I mean something divine, they talk about a consciousness all around the world or something that impacts our lives as human beings and something that we can uh, finally merge with or accept, uh, uh, I mean, merge with in that sense. Is there some connection in that way? Yeah, I think it's totally connected, Ajit, to what you are saying. Of course, people describe these phenomena from the viewpoint of the of the system of beliefs and the particular cultures, but it's always the same. That has been the, the struggle and the search of humanity from the beginning of times, since the first hominids started to stand in two legs and, and to realize that them and the world were two separate entities. <laughs> and that's been a constant process of evolution since then, probably millions of years. And that is always the same, it's that incredible search and uh, one of the things that I like the most in this, uh, in this uh, Mission 81 uh, revival is, is Silo referred to that in, 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 in the discussions in Madrid, for example, when he talks about the yes and the no, and then from the beginning of the origin of the civilizations and the struggle of the human being, he was describing the struggle of the consciousness. So all these things, no doubt, they are uh, connected. And what we rescue, uh, in, in, in the, the descriptions, in the scriptures, in the religious texts, in, 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 in teachings of greater depth, I mean, is more or less uh, uh, representations that can uh, uh, be inspiring for uh, this condition in which we live. Because uh, in the moment that the body goes, the psyche goes, because it's totally connected to, 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 to the body, is what gives uh, identity. And what could exist is, is certainly a center of gravity, is a center of light, is, is other type of things that is very difficult for us to uh, describe because we don't, we don't have any registers or any uh, way to identify or to describe that. And so they are all approaches. And in all these approaches, if you try to read not the wording, but you try to read the feeling underneath, the, it's, it's similar, it's similar. It's, it's the intuition of a profound truth. It's the intuition of, a, of an intelligence, of a, of a principle of creation of which we have been part always. And we are expression too. 
and uh, towards which we have an aim to return. And this is what people represent as paradise, as heaven, as this or that, nirvana. Some people, because they are more advanced in terms of the, of the personal psychological uh, work, of course, they have representations that perhaps are more accurate because uh, they have been able to reach higher levels of consciousness and, and uh, consolidate those higher levels of consciousness. It's like having a scaffolding that is much higher than the normal scaffolding that we count on. You can climb, but you get to a plateau and that's it. But if you have a tall one, you can climb much higher. And from there, you will have a vision that is much more exciting, I would say. And that gives a better intuition of what may happen after that. But um, yes, there is always that problem of representation. Is all that within the psyche. then it's a matter of faith. You may have the faith, intuition. And when do you want to convert it into words, it's difficult. It's a direction. So it's a complicated uh, topic. It's a very profound topic. Yes, uh, Antonio. <laughs> of course, we see it, Antonio, we see it when... the spiritual. Antonio, when uh, when we are when we are on the process of accesses, yeah, is there any indicators that we can uh, we can track uh, whether we are ascending or uh, we are uh, we are stagnant at a level? Yeah, I think. Uh... It has a particular flavor, the, 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 the way ascent is, uh, it has its own signs that is, 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 is light, is luminous, is, uh, you have an intuition that guides you. Otherwise, it uh, would be very difficult to, to know if you are going up or down. But what exactly are those uh, indicators? Certainly, you will not get distractions. Certainly, you will have an overwhelming feeling of, of, uh, of light, of clarity, of, uh, of goodness, of thankfulness. All these profound emotions that are associated with uh, the coming closer to a source of, of light, of energy that we experience when we have a profound experience with the force, for example, we, we know that we have worked well because we have lots of indicators within ourselves. And uh, well, the same thing happens in asceticism. When working with the discipline many times, uh, because you were tired, because you didn't have the same level of motivation, because of, of um, several factors, you felt that you did everything that was supposed to do. You sat on your table, you did all the ritual that you have created for yourself to enter into the profound, to start working with a particular step of the, of the discipline, and yet you recognize you couldn't move beyond a certain point. And so you kept trying and you kept trying and you kept your attention and your effort, or many times you went to the previous step and you tried to come back. And, and many times you couldn't uh, progress. That's why it was so important to take notes always of of uh, what you have done every session of work, you take your notes. And when I look at my, uh, at my uh, books of notes of the different steps of the discipline, many times I find a repetition as if you were confronting all the time like a wall, <laughs> a resistance. And one day you cannot explain why because of permanence and because of, if you want internal purification of your of your uh, motivations, suddenly all that resistance tend to crumble and you suddenly start to move to the next day. And there you have an indicator of progress because things that before were confusing start to clarify in your mind. And all that goes consolidating and in that way you move to the next step. 
and the next step. And the person that is guiding your uh, process, they will be able to recognize in that description of indicators that you have in your records, that in fact, you have moved into the problematic into the into the the, the knot of, of of or the formulation of the next step that you have moved into that because you are dealing with a different sort of of uh, problematic and uh, and that's how you can guide the, the the process so they are indicators but they are relative the indicators to the work you're doing And there are indicators also outside, because uh, another thing that in the work of the discipline you have to observe is what happens in your day to day life. You, for some reason, you are walking on the street and suddenly you get like a flash and you have become much more alert, much more conscious, much more uh, aware. And you notice that you are moving to a level of consciousness of yourself, if you want. You rarely stop and you start to see things in a relatively new manner, new way. It's not flashes and things and that you have achieved enlightenment, but, but you know that you are in a more vigilant level and you ask yourself, why? What has triggered that phenomena? And, uh, and, and yes, so it's concomitant to the experience that you are having when sustaining the central process of your discipline. That's very interesting. And also many times you, there are occurrences, as they say, things that occur to you that you were not expecting them, like positive accidents, if you want. Things that are lucky encounters, somebody that you haven't talked to for a long, long time, yet it has crossed the idea that such and such person would be very receptive of being in touch with you at this point because you wanted to comment about an experience or whatever. And suddenly you get a phone call and, and it happens to be uh, that person. And you say, but how? I mean, this is not possible. I didn't make any attempt to contact the person. So it's if, as if different worlds or different phenomena of consciousness without you trying to trigger them start to happen as if you have touched something that is much more structural than the, 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 the structure of your mechanical consciousness. And you have tapped into that and start to produce phenomena. Phenomena that you are not in control of and that you cannot repeat at will, but that happen. And so what you take note of is that they have happened. They have happened in relation to the work that you are doing with the discipline. Now, the time in which they happen, there is no synchronicity. It's asynchronic. So because time is a concept that has lots of reality for the present level of consciousness. But for other type of phenomena, time is different. I don't know how to define it, but uh, they do not run according to the synchronicities of the time as we understand it. So the, all these type of things, put together in context, show like a picture of, of, of what you tend to touch when you uh, go into the work of assesses. By you. Yes. Antonio, uh, many of these phenomena that you're talking about, uh, were elaborated, not elaborated, were, were put down by Silo in his inner look under intimation of the meaning or uh, the yeah. chapter that something, something of that kind, where you experience certain phenomena which, uh, which are in, intuitions, as you said. Yeah. But they're not the everyday way of living. They're not the exactly. everyday experiences. But now so the ones that, that the he describes it? there seem to have a, 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 a greater intensity. So they are more distinctive and they are more clearly uh, mobilizations of the uh, higher centers in the sense that they at one they erupt 
in your into your level of consciousness and they are of tal magnitude that practically they paralyze you they shock you and uh, because if a phenomena of knowing what is happening in a place that you are not in in a, that is distant or in a different time and it comes like a flash and you see that with all clarity in your mind that force you to stop everything that you're doing and you recognize that something unique and special has happened there to you and these ones that we are describing in 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 the work of or parallel to the works of assesses they are of a magnitude a bit lower magnitude but of the same region of phenomena in the sense that they get triggered not by your intention at the moment but by other factors is because doing your, the work of your discipline, you have been touching phenomena of the different sort of level because of the abstractions that you are realizing in your mind or the practices of that, of that discipline. And those phenomena, although in a later time, they get uh, expressed, but many times with a lower um, intensity. That's why it's very important to be very aware in your day-to-day -day life when you're working with discipline, especially in the more advanced steps. But even as I remember in my case from initial steps, because of the attitude that you take and how you start to go deeper and deeper into your psyche. And, uh, and you, you write them down and uh, you put them as an uncharacteristic phenomena or, or an unusual phenomena. And it's very important to make your own catalog. And later on, you can classify which of them uh, are of greater depth in your viewpoint and what are the mere, merely coincidences. But there are lots of coincidences and lots of things that are unusual. There, there is uh, the phenomenon of that you get on the spot, you get uh, many gifts. And some of these are the gifts that you get. But uh, we call them Siddhis here in India. That's a them? word for that. Siddhis. They are, they, they are unusual powers you get, kind of powers, you get yes. intuitive powers. Yeah. But, but he, he suggests to us that uh, don't get detained by this. Exactly. Huh. But continue. Don't try to job. appropriate them because the consciousness. Yeah. Is it always have that sort of very animal instinct underneath that you, you get them and you think that you are achieving powers and that then you will be able to do things with it. It's a chaman approach to this type of things right, that you right, will be right. able to use them. Forget them, be very indifferent to all these things. So you have to continue navigating, navigating. But you, yeah, take Antonio, note that you take note that they have happened, that's it. Antonio, is the... Uh... Is there a, a way uh, to induce this experience uh, when uh, uh, one uh, uh, got, got the way uh, to reach this experience and uh, he established the uh, profound connection? Is mm -hmm. there a way to induce this experience to uh, anybody else? Or, or Silo many times uh, told about... Uh, uh, the time uh, time factor of uh, uh, the uh, uh, what evolution of consciousness like uh, uh, this uh, rise and fall of a civilization yeah. when uh, uh, when a civilization uh, rise when mm -hmm. the time nurtures uh, when the time approaches and reach a, a certain level Mm -hmm. uh, like he is referring uh, many times uh, cosmic relations mm -hmm. and ambit uh, a, a cosmic a, a, a ambit fourth ambit uh, which is connected to uh, the rise and fall of civilizations and uh, this kind of profound experience is there any anything uh, you can uh, comment about this Maybe from a, a more cosmic analysis, you can see those coincidences, but, uh, but uh, the things that you can induce by yourself and that you can connect with and that you can take advantage of, I think, uh, I think this is a, is, a, is a pathway that it takes you in the direction of the magical. 
or, or what we call the magical consciousness and, no in the, um, what 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 my question is uh, in the early uh, school notebook mm -hmm. he is referring uh, a, a psychophysical sender uh, that he uh, he is mentioning it as a superior sender yes above the intellectual sender yes and somewhere he he told uh, uh, when when the uh, when the human civilization reaches to a certain level yeah uh, this superior sender can be accessed by anybody by birth yes that is a is theory a, i think is there, uh, a, uh, is there a possibility uh, of uh, suppose uh, reaching uh, a, a n number of uh, uh, people reaching that level consciousness level the entire humanity will upgrade to that superior sender yes i think so no maybe maybe because uh -huh. i mean if the whole psychic atmosphere is is change and uh, but immediately that will have an expression in the social organization okay. and uh, and uh, if it has an expression in the social organization the system of values the education the general orientation of society the aspirations of society will change will be a massive reorientation to another sort of concerns or preoccupations but uh, i mean i personally to believe that uh, will be an alignment of planets or stars or galaxies or whatever and because of that purely because of that we will all become enlightened in humanity i think that is a, a bit far fetched for my particular system of beliefs <laughs> i think we have to to work step by step our own ascents is there a key key role for Uh, school uh, uh, to play uh, humanity into this direction exactly that is a function of the school precisely okay so we have a mission that is almost beyond our possibilities <laughs> it's a big challenge okay yes yeah in the sense all that you say uh falls into the humanize the earth in the expression to humanize yeah. the earth is to make this social change that will benefit all of our humanity and to make the social change requires a certain raise in rising in the consciousness so more and more people doing this practice and understanding themselves and treating others and changing the entire a uh, way of being to a better way of better society being better beings in that society i think that's the key that's what they mean by personal and social transformation yeah suppose that mean it so that scene that you many of you you have been able to see in chao pati beach after silo finishes his speech and his message and the ceremony and people are really uh, embracing each other and they are crying and they are profoundly moved and what is pouring from the hearts is that feeling of love of 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 goodness of the best wishes towards one another if that could be expanded and would become the permanent way of feeling each other in society the problems would be resolved because uh, you would try to share everything good that you have with the other one and the person next to you would try to do the same thing and would produce an enormous uh, transformation but the important thing is to sustain that you need to have a, a, a different sort of basic understanding at that moment people connected so much with what silo was saying and uh, that really they have been able to trigger that we all have the experience of those moments of inspiration but then later on we got we go back to the day to day and we start to dilute that feeling and to forget that feeling so once we construct it we have to to have mechanisms that help us to build it up every day and then we have the work of the force and then we have a series of of techniques that if we apply regularly of course uh, we can keep some of those states as very permanent states 
And that is a basis upon which those higher centers, of course, can get access. If there's a lot of contradiction in society and people are made to live in such contradictory situations, and they're bogged down with it, then there's little scope for them to really rise up in this. Exactly. I mean, this becomes secondary, you know, secondary. Yeah. But uh, coming to this of approaching the profound, uh, and say I am in a continuous effort, in my a continuous effort. So somewhere in the guide to the inner road, he says, your memories way, your previous actions way, there are things that are going to keep you down. But then he says that, you know, but you continue on your path and do not be distracted in that sense. And, and then there would be many, many phenomena that occur to you. And many of the phenomena as you described, and maybe colors and sounds and things like that. But he says, go beyond that also, to go beyond that. So do we approach this slowly, not, not taking heavens by left hand, as he says, the Gosh method, but uh, approach this so, uh, slowly so that each practice or each day of practice or each, we unify ourselves. We get stronger within. We understand and we, we get built a center of gravity within ourselves. And that center of gravity would be directional. And when we know that we're going falling apart from that feeling in the center, which is joyful and all that, then we know that we're not on the right track and we need to maybe retrace our steps. Is there something like that? I think so, but I mean, they are, I think uh, uh, some of those uh, images are taken from the, the Bardo Troll, uh, the Tibetan book of the death, and uh, the, the book of the death in, in the Egyptian uh, tradition, that where, um, where directions that after the person died, were recommended by the people guiding the process as secrets that they were telling them in the, in the, in the ears. No? They were giving directions. If you see lights of this sort as the other one, avoid that and follow that other one. If this and this appears and you have to exclude that and go anyway to the next, blah, blah, blah. They, if, if it was a roadmap and the people guiding your process, as when we do an asking for somebody who has died, they close and loving, many times mentally, we can read the, the guide of the, of the inner, Aguia uh, Camino uh, Interno, how do you, do you call it in English? The guide of the inner way. Yes, you, you, by you describing all these different steps, if, if there is no time, if it's no, uh, no uh, space that could interfere, probably what you are telling them we were trying to communicate with the best of, of, of the most loving part of yourself, that message reaches the other, the other people. I, I have done uh, with people that uh, I really uh, have loved in my, in my life after they die and, uh, and I do it mentally. And many times I have had the feeling that I have managed to connect with them and to, to give them an advice that has been useful. Because in many times the spirit probably keeps meandering here and there and because they don't have a memory during the living life to help to distinguish those type of things that for us are more common because we have been studying them for years and years. So we have some sort of nomenclature, some sort of idea of what we should do. But for somebody that has zero uh, experience, they can get completely lost. And probably that is a very anguishing process that can take thousands of years because time is you're not... Saying in the hereafter, you're saying in their hereafter, 
they can be lost. Yes. And we can guide them from here. I think so. But that is wow. a person, personal belief of mine. <laughs> oh, wow. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. I, um, yes, I, I, um, I try to do things of that sort because on the other hand, it helps you to reconcile with, uh, with uh, parts of your biography that you are not totally happy with in, 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 in opportunities you have overlooked the attention of people that were very cared a, a lot about you and they were very loving with you and you carry on doing your own things. And at one point you discover that they are not here anymore, that they have left this, uh, this uh, space and time. No. And then you, you feel that there is something that you want to do for them. Right, right. And, uh, and then if you try to connect with uh, the, that memory and all that, and you invite them to follow the, the guide in the same way if they had just passed away, it will have a similar effect and maybe, maybe, yeah, I don't know, it, it will have a meaning for them, whichever point in the process of transit they may find themselves. And they have done it with my parents and they have done it with so, old girlfriends and they have done it, yeah, with one of my brothers who died, people that you felt that you oh. haven't been able to oblige enough afterwards. But isn't, isn't this also a process of the, our own psyches trying to reconcile those situations within ourselves? Definitely. That's what they are. Uh -huh. no, no, I am not I saying mean, that I am penetrating, I mean, realms of, no. But you don't know it, on the other hand. Right, right. You don't know it. You, you don't, don't know it. if all these realms, in fact, they are interconnected. Who said right. that we are like small cubicles that completely separate from everything? If, if, no. If... no, and Silo at one point used to say we are enchained gods. Yes. Yeah. So if we, are, if we are liberating ourselves, surely this is one of the directions. Surely there would be contacts and things like that. Because if the Egyptians and all those people in those days, mm. they were whispering to the ears of the dead, what is the pathway? ahead yes. and they say hearing is the last sense to go that's what they say but i mean after when a, when a body dies i mean it's amazing it's amazing i mean if they are going to chart the person's course in the year after here yes. we and do I, this with the person when he's alive in the yeah. ceremony of assistance we exactly. go into we do this, no? We do yeah. this, charting. But he's alive. Yes, because otherwise he cannot hear anything or it cannot, uh, but uh, you, you are trying to, to, to give a sense of direction while still he's alive. But if he just died, because many times it remains there for some time, you, you can carry on. And, and you yes. can carry on also afterwards. Look in the, in, in the pathway here, it's, uh, it says, do not imagine that you are alone in your, in your village, in your city, in the earth, and in the infinite worlds. Oh, this, this is not, a part. Yeah, do not imagine that you are enchained to this time and this space. <laughs> it's a thing, sorry. This was there, but you brought a beautiful dimension to it. Yes. This was there always, always, but it is. Yeah. I mean, see, it's been with us for 20 years or so. I mean, maybe 17 or 18 years. Yeah. But we're just dealing with these subjects now. Because this, there is it's a depth that uh, subjects recreate and recreate themselves a thousand times. And depending also on the, on the perspective that you have towards them, they get transformed according to your, to your, capacity or your your uh, your your view your look at them and our look keeps changing because you are following a path an ascent path a path of transformation the path of higher consciousness so when we go in this uh, ascending spiral and send, suddenly we are in a higher point 
and we look at the same things, we see everything different from those perspectives. True. So it's amazing. Every time they reveal to you new things that you have not been able to gaze uh, before. Yes, well, Anthony, yes, I want to true. ask you an important question to me at least. Uh, we, are, we are on this path and there are new experiences. And some of them we don't digest fully as we are on it. So can one get lost in this? Uh, are there some points of anchorage that we can come back to and center ourselves and things like that? If it is a unnerving experience, if, is there some points of anchorage that we can have instead of being lost in the understanding of what was there? We come back to our thing and go back. You know? Because he said that if you experience with the experience of force, he said, if it's the contrary happens, you don't actually have that experience of peace or maybe force, then it's better to close the experience, go back, yeah. do it after some time or something. Yeah. So even this, if there's something, something that doesn't seem to right, or we've not been able to digest it, or so whatever it is, is there something like we cut off ourselves from the experience and come back to ourselves? Yeah, I, all, I think every experience that is not showing uh, the proper indicators that you expect, right. uh, you, you have to interrupt and, uh, and uh, uh, wait until you can create proper conditions. That's why we have to always be very careful about the, the, the conditions of origin. If you are very well relaxed, if you are very inspired, if you are in contact with your heart in the way that you should, and uh, you go into the experience of, uh, of the force, yeah, you will have a different quality of experience that if you have been distracted, if you have been involved in things that are completely external and, and, and all that. At that point, if you are working with other people, you perfectly can uh, not make a fuss and standing and moving and because it's disconcerting for the others, but you can very well pay attention to the state of relaxation and, uh, and, and just be there and understanding that you are not trying to pursue it any further because you are not moving any further. Because you are distracted, mm -hmm. because you, you have lots of reveries coming into your mind is fundamentally that. Eh? True, true. But in this aspect, is there an aspect of letting go also? I mean, we use letting go as uh, just letting it be, letting things be the way they are, letting go, not bringing our own tensions and ah. interpretations and into it, letting go and uh, uh, not, being, not being expectant of a result. Yeah. And uh, furthermore, just yielding and surrendering to what we feel is uh, happening to us in a positive way. Yeah, and I think that is the attitude that should correspond to that, uh, that same uh, description that uh, we made before. You know that you are not progressing in the way that you have progressed doing the same experience before. You recognize that in spite of your efforts, the conditions are not right. So you can either uh, continue without any expectations or, or come back to base and then understand that the next time you have to attempt the whole thing fresh again. But that is your own option as an operator. In all these cases, as you know, we are always the ones in charge because it's our individual process is we are the masters. To being the master of the process doesn't mean to be right or to, or to be guiding it to, to a very good end. <laughs> but we have to make that decision. And there is no uh, fixed formula, I think. And we may make mistakes, but also we learn from our mistakes. Because you know that if you work, uh, are working badly and you push or you persevere in that, you are creating a memory of that that will not help the next time that you attempt the experience. Yes. Because you will, you, will, you will tend to go into the same place. It creates like an inertia. And, uh, and we don't want that. We don't want to create 
recordings of memory in our experiences that are not the ones that are conducive to the to the indicators that the experience uh, expect. In the case of the experience with the force, the indicators are very well uh, formulated and you yes. identify them on the way. You know? uh, what I want to ask is that there is, anyway, when we're doing this, there is some kind of a goal we are trying to reach or whatever, and there's an expectancy. So somewhere it was said that uh, uh, you have to get, you have to stand aside in the sense, let the profound express itself. Yeah. Yeah, if you uh, get to any of those places with, uh, with um, a desire of possession, of appropriation, of, of control of the experience, uh, those are all negative, are all right, all the contrary. The more uh, that you go deeper and deeper, and you recognize that you are in a in a in a field, you have to to go diluting any sort of expectations or aspirations or intentions of permanence or of remaining there or anything. No, no, you go liberating of all these things because the more you advance, you you understand that there are sort of impurities that they are not pushing you forward, but they are the contrary, they are bringing you backwards. Okay. Mm. He, he discusses a lot of these, see, for a long time now, he wrote the guided experiences in 1980. You know? But in that he says, no, I, a pilgrim, returning to my people after an experience. You yeah. go and you, yeah. you see an experience and then you say, who am I, but a humble pilgrim returning to my people with my hair forehead in my hands, luminous. Yeah. You know, all these expressions, I mean, years, 40 years ago, it's giving us these indications. Very inspiring. But, because there is where you feel the, the, the force uh, in the beginning, no, the hands. You remember when he describes that uh, I feel tingling. different feelings in, in, in the hands, etc. So it's hard to express there because the hands are in the level of the heart where you have placed a sphere. And it starts to mobilize those uh, those uh, sensations, but then you take it to the head, and then uh, so those are the points. And and when he said uh, the forehead, the forehead is more or less uh, the the position of the pineal gland you know, that is responsible for those phenomena of light and is what instigate the manifestations of the emotional superior center. And in the uh, uh, mental relaxation, mm. the sphere which uh, I mean the, the diagram which is given to us in the uh, self liberation, in that in the mental relaxation, the directionally it all goes interior. Yeah, relaxing from the outside towards the interior, and then then he says, "Come down, come down so below the same that point. Below yes, that. the same point. Yeah, yeah. So we approach the superior point from there." Well, is, is there well, ways, in my view, this is a personal interpretation of inducing, because you create more sensibility about that part of the, of the body that normally you are not in greater contact. But those yeah. is where they are connected, those superior nervous points that are associated to the manifestation of the, of the, of the light, of the psychological phenomena that corresponds to the... Um, uh, higher centers. Yes, but this is just about uh, mental relaxation when you're talking about. It's just yeah. mental relaxation, of course. But then where does the placement of the guide come? I mean, in that sphere of representation and we are deep inside and we are meditating also and we want to go to whatever. So the placement of the guide also comes like that. I mean, the true placement of the guide or a deeper guide, more profound guide. I think they are all connected, these phenomena, but uh, where is the guide as a localization connected? I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, say. Probably I, mean, I would place it more in my, in my heart, the guide. No? But as a physically at the lower level into, in, within the heart that way? Well, what happens is that the localization of the centers and um, because of the plexus, the chakras, is one thing. Is is places of resonance because of the concomitance with parts of the nervous system. 
or the emotional phenomena. That's why the, 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 the emotional center tends to be placed in the level of, of the heart and the intellectual center in the level of the head and the, and the motor center in the level of the plexus. But the centers and the functions are different things and the nervous uh, structures that mobilize all these phenomena are all in the head anyway. Okay, yeah, true, yeah. true, true. And ultimately, I, my last question. Uh, in all this uh, approach to the profound and things like that, what role does the internal, a true internal guide play? Like it was a year after also, because we say, I know, Silo said in terms of Asalotari, he said that may his guide, uh, and then I, but the guide take him towards his whatever, you know? I don't have the exact, but he used the word may his guide. Uh, Accompany or something. inspired him. I mean, Accompany yeah. Accompany his journey or something. Like yeah. That. So obviously, you know, there's something because uh, Salvatore had gone. Yeah. But then he's talking about may his guide he's in the continuum of it. So what is the internal guide in a true sense, a deep, profound guide which gives meaning and all those indications that we want? And the so in this, can you explain it approaching the profound? That we use the guide to approach the profound because we know that there's a pathway that the guide opens up the middle way and he can accompany us, he can be around us, he or she, yeah. of course. Can yeah. be around us and uh, walk with us, everything. But I mean, it doesn't have to be in the head. Uh, we close our eyes and the whole space of representation appears and everything that we see externally appears there. Yeah. But in this process, that this deep internal process of thinking and mm -hmm. we're having with the guide with us and we're reaching this. So, and this is a source of comfort. The guide is a great source of comfort. Yeah. And uh, that way. It's so, a companion, Isa, with all the characteristics that we know that the internal guide depends how you have constructed the internal guide. But the guides are, uh, are phenomena that they are described in all, uh, in all um, uh, traditions, in all um, mysticisms of all the different times and uh, religions. It's, it's a companion, it's a friend of whichever gender that you want to construct it, because we all construct guides of different sort. And uh, with those characteristics, I mean, uh, very wise or special characters appear in, in, in more profound levels of consciousness. So when you are uh, really embarking in some type of, 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 of deepening uh, exploration, you may contact also with guides that uh, you, traditionally you have not uh, have access to. But uh, in, in all this type of, 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 of works, you, if you have a guide that is, can orient you in, in, uh, in whatever work you are doing, I think you, you are better off. But, uh, but I don't think that uh, there is a one one fits all in the sense that no, no 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 not at all not at all i mean more profound guides answer that is clearly the case more profound guides keep answering those calls that we make that is clear that as a matter of fact in the hindu tradition we keep talking about uh hindu uh, gurus gurus the guru appears uh, to some people you know that they, they say this but uh in this construct, what are we, are we having in this construct and allowing newer and newer, deeper guides to appear. What I'm saying is that do, do we seek their assistance in this path? I mean, they re reinforce this. Do they, I mean, can we get, can we get messages, clear messages, clear indications that do this. Yeah, this in, right. different, in, the, in different cases, it's different. In my particular case of working, for example, I do not invoke uh, uh, images of any particular uh, character. Uh, many times I find enormous inspiration 
from uh, uh, from Silo, but is is not as in the picture of Silo. Is an abstract, an abstract construction that I have of Silo as I see him in the most profound perception of him. And I try to get advice, or I have a dialogue briefly, but I don't know if that dialogue is true or is in an, a creation of my mind. It's obviously a creation of my mind. But everything that I can represent is real for my mind. So the, the, the truthfulness or not truthfulness, it doesn't seem to be the essential. Important thing is the functionality. If the guide can contribute wisdom, if the guide can con con contribute uh, uh, affection for you and uh, the strength that you need to motivate in a particular uh, moment of your process, that is, is, uh, is uh, sufficient. In moments of, uh, of uh, big doubt or big confusion, or sometimes you, you know that you don't have the, the answer for something, but you know that you have to tackle that problem. And so you, you keep asking within yourself and asking. And uh, suddenly it comes as a response to that. It comes as a, uh, you get the idea that is answering what you have been looking for. But in my case, without a clear representation, it's not like a... Uh, yes. yes, could be a feeling, could be a yeah. mantra. But what I was asking this is specifically in the approach to the profound. I was asking this exactly. the term of the guide exactly. in the approach to the profound. We rely heavily on that help. I think it is very important, yes, to 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 uh, come to a state of inspiration. But depends on how you do you work. I mean, how configured you have the guide, your internal guide. And how often do you work with a guide? And and probably some of us will will operate uh, differently with uh, with uh, that and uh, with that synthesis of wisdom, of goodness, of strength, etc. Those characteristics that the guide has. And uh, it depends. Sometimes you will invoke and will come with uh, perhaps different characteristics. And uh, sometimes you will not, but you know that something is accompanying your, your process. So I, in that sense, I, I don't know clearly what to, to respond to you, Ajit, but I think uh, there is no one correct I, answer. I, I, understand. I understand that guide with his wisdom and his uh, kindness and uh, strength mm. represents the best part of myself. Yeah. Because he triggers my wisdom, he triggers my kindness, I mean, invoking him triggers mm. these changes within me. It triggers. But now in these higher experiences, which are there, it's unknown, uncharted territory, truly speaking. We have to really rely on ourselves and what we're doing, we should be doing right. Mm. So in this, we don't want to be alone. Yeah, I mean, not lonely. We want to be, we are alone, but we should not feel lonely. As he says, do not feel alone. You know, and there, there, the guide, as a, as a, confluence of all that is good. I mean, we use that as a, as a, guide, guide in this road. I think it's very important if you get that feeling accompany you. If it doesn't have a con. con clear uh, representation. There is that, uh, uh, that uh, famous classic in, in, in Italian literature that is a divine comedy that, yes. uh, where, where there is Dante walking with Vir Virgil, the famous poet of the, of, of the end of the, of the Roman period. And that is his guide because he was a man of letters and in Dante. And of course, you can imagine that he has chosen a, a, a guide that for him was the highest possible imagining in terms of literature and, and wisdom, et cetera, et cetera, in, in, that, uh, in that period of history and in that culture. 
and then they go in this exploration to the to to hell and then to the mid 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 plane and then to the highest planes and finally they get to the well the saints are and god and the angels and archangels and all that and there are lots of observations of great interest well he is walking in all these planes of of hell and uh, and uh, the middle planes etc with uh, with Virgil all the time, and they are carrying a dialogue. Okay. He is asking for advice, and Virgil tells him some other story that corresponds to that period. And Dante takes advantage of all that to see in hell all families and people that he hated from his time, they are suffering the most horrible tortures because, because they were complete bastards in life and they did all sorts of things. So he goes to it and the, yeah, they are, so they are rotting and being tortured or whatever, whatever. That is, is, is interesting, it's funny, but the whole uh, abstraction of, of, of the situation is, is, is very relevant psychologically and, and spiritually because he is going into uncharted territories with a guide that is, it has the wisdom, the strength and the, and the sort of caliber sufficient to guide him without getting lost and showing the way. And in fact, uh, in fact, Virgil in many occasions in all these trips shows him which, which is the way and what is next. So yeah, I think the guide is, 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 is important, very important very important and we will construct it in, in the ways that has been suggested. In periods it may change. We, we should not impose to our psyche one particular guide that you have used in previous stages. I don't know, this is my guide and it was represented in this way and you try to push your guide into another sphere that is of, of greater different characteristics and it doesn't fit. And that clash maybe uh, will stop you from, from moving forward or you give your guide a more abstract sort of, uh, of uh, aspect of representation. Is with you, but it doesn't have a, a visual representation, but is there, in which case it can move freely in all even the highest, highest levels. But it will always give that sense of company, that sense of comfort, and that sense of wisdom that you will require no? guidance. Yeah. Right. I think that visceral sensation is the most important of the guide because whether, you know, that visceral, at least some sort of feeling of accompaniment yeah. that has yeah, to be. I think. Uh, I think it's a feeling, but uh, I, I locate more feelings and especially higher feelings into the level of the, of the heart and the head, no? Visceral to me sounds a bit too much in the category yeah, of the more base, vegetative. Too base. No? Yeah. Too base. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's a feeling, no? It's a feeling. When, when, you, when you said all this about uh, Dante and the Divine Comedy and all, you brought a lot of parallels in my mind of, you know, so-called spiritual texts that we, in India, we have the Mahabharata and things like that, where we have these kind of, you know, these kind of episodes which some characters go after, the, seek their brothers after that, the central characters. And there's a guy there, he's called Krishna. And uh, the entire thing, which is there, draws some parallels. So it seems like from the ages, we can, yeah. we can uh, find that there's a track, <laughs> there's a track, but don't yeah, get well, probably, here. probably Dante uh, got inspired precisely from that literature and then he did an adaptation must, must, the be. because it's more recent chronologically and whereas right. uh, the, the mystical tradition in India is much older. And all right. these guys right. were reading everything that was available because in the Renaissance, you didn't have the, you, you tend to concentrate lots of knowledge and all the good books and good texts and all that. So most probably, I mean, he knew that. No? The entire, th but the whole problem is that the entire thing is clouded in mystery and you know in poetic language, which is difficult to access and understand. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we need something more clearer, more the stand. Experience it yourself for yourself. Yeah, that, that tends to be my approach. I mean, if things are, are 
difficult to understand, I tend to uh, reject them. If things are too confusing, I don't like them. I mean, though, but to me, those are in indicators of truth. And this is one of the things that I admire the most in Silo's doctrine, that is right. so distinctive and so clear and so pristine. And the differences are so well justified and explained. But sometimes we are carried by our traditions, our culture, our what, the, the, the memories that we have in our mind, what we were taught in the childhood, what we read at school in, I don't know, what, what classic in our cultural system. And, and of course, there are other things that drag us down and generate confusion of all sorts. Because there are different le levels of experience, different levels of language, different levels of sensibility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is why I was going to say that for more clarity, all you need is this. Exactly. <laughs> that's and that's all. Only that much. <laughs> well, uh, it's coming close to the close now, but I want to apologize if I have used up too much of the time. Is there any other question in somebody's mind? Ajit, that... your questions have been useful, at least to me, and I'm sure to others also. But if there's anything else, anybody else would like some yes. clarity on the subject. And yeah. I apologize also for taking the time or for giving answers that sometimes they are not that clear or not that distinctive. But yeah, we are to exchange amongst ourselves, not to. Uh... I, all of us have learned something today, at least from my side. I, I, I have. <coughs> but anybody else? Because I cannot, buy with my mobile, see who's there. But Ashutosh was there, I know. And uh, yeah, we have Ashutosh, Rajinder, Shankar, Chandrababu, Dayanand, Chaitanya, and Baiju here. <laughs> Some, and Pradeepan, sorry. Pradeepan, yeah. Some others. Yeah, but all Chaitanya is here, but I don't know if it's on this picture. No? Hi, uh, I am uh, right here. <laughs> Lord, Lord Krishna left, probably finding some competition. Chaitanya, would you, wouldn't you like to ask a question? Hi, Ajit. Uh, hi. No, Ajit. No, you? Yeah, in your car. No, I'm not in my car. Actually, I'm in a rickshaw. I'm <laughs> going from Santa Cruz to Bandra. I have uh -huh. to catch a train uh, to Latour in about two hours. Nevertheless, is there a question you'd like to ask? No, Ajit. I think your questions have been quite interesting. Uh, lovely questions. So I'm just uh, listening. Oh. That's the first one for me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, yes. Ashutosh, I was going to Ashutosh is not is not available. Well, no, no, I'm there. Is there. Yeah? there. Okay. I'm very much Anything there. you want to ask, Ashutosh? No, I was um, uh, the last point which um, Antonio made that you know um, in, there are many uh, descriptions of uh, the process and the approach but the way uh, silo makes it uh, uh, presented to us uh, in such a clear direct and yet and yet in a very deep way that it cannot be you know trivialized what exactly. uh, Philo says, especially the, because we have been spending a lot of time on inner look uh, and its translation in Marathi, um, I realize it uh, more and more. And my colleague here, Rajendra, also says, would echo this uh, that uh, he, he is a troublemaker. We call Philo as a troublemaker. He will not let us. <laughs> he will not let us uh, rest peacefully. Uh, the moment he presents something, he will um, make us work on it uh, till we uh, till we have some you know semblance of understanding. So uh, yes, I think that is a really and that is really uh, a sign of you know its validity that uh, it comes to you so, so in such straight and direct manner. It's, it's making, it's producing a synthesis. No other founder in, in history of humanity 
had to deal with a world like the one Silo has lived in. Yes. Where already all the civilizations, all the cultures were joined together and all the, 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 the myths of history. And, and, and he gives lots of, uh, of credence and lots of recognition to everything that has been done and contributed before. But he explains things in the way that he sees it. So he takes all this tradition and he cre creates an amalgam, creates a synthesis of an incredible quality. And everybody, because of that, feels identified, feels that is speaking for themselves. I feel represented in Silo's explanations and doctrine. But at the same time, you yourselves that belong to different Indian cultures and at the same time some other person from whatever in, 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 in the rest of the world. So that is almost like magic, it's extraordinary. And it's such simplicity of, of, of language and such depth that is... So that's why, as, as Sudhir was saying, we, we don't need to, 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 to look any much further than this. <laughs> because there's so much in that book. No? It's, uh as a text of reflection and meditation. Friends, we're almost closing now. What about uh, uh, our Pradipan and Chandra Babu? Nothing to say? No. No, no. Uh, Ajit, uh, no. Ajit uh, I got, uh, I, I discussed many times with Ayyappa and Fernando and many times with Pradipan and Baiju. We discussed a lot about this and I got uh, uh, many knowledge about this, by, but I need early experience. That is, I am trying to, to reach there. Yeah. The, the, you know, it, it's a case like, you know, there's this Red Indian, you know, the mm -hmm. Indians who are yes, original yes. Red Indian. Their, their meeting with each other was the word how. When they met, they said yeah, how, yes. how. Yes, yes. So one of these oh. boys, one of these red Indian young boys, he learned how to kiss. Mm. And he stood at the street corner and saying, chance, chance. So somebody, oh. one by a person came up to him, to him and said that, what is this word chance? I thought your regular greeting was how. So he mm. said, no, I know how now. I want chance. So yes. you're wanting the experience. is something yes. like that. You've reached everywhere, yes, but yes. now you want the experience. You want yes, the chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I am also trying to reach there so, because uh, we are, what here uh, raised the questions uh, by Baiju we <laughs> discussed many times so so uh, it is enough uh, no nothing more yeah. I, so yeah, the I topics think... are all open so we can reopen them whenever we want I mean we are here, yes, yes. we are working together. If there is any relevant experience or a new discovering, we can share it. Yes, yes. But I got uh, only knowledge, but I, I uh, now uh, we want uh, experience. Uh, that experience, I, I am searching uh, and trying for reach that uh, in that experience. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, also the all the discussions also I like it, and I got uh, some new knowledge from this, from uh, your discussions. Good, and and uh, another topic that would be interesting to to uh, comment at one point is uh, is the work with the disciplines. Yes. So all of you, you have worked with the disciplines when accessing yeah. the school I, I remember i remember when um, we met in kandaroli with some of you in uh, when was it in, in 2007 2008 maybe okay yes. Be uh, because uh, that was uh, eight and ten eight, with, eight. with a yapa too and that, that was a uh, fernando was also there was the explanation of each one of the disciplines and i was in, invited to to present uh, the mental discipline. Yeah. And uh, the question would be whether there is any need to repeat or review the process of the discipline. 
that is a very personal sort of decision. Each one will know, etc. But obviously, uh, to re review all the steps and to review them uh, 10 years or 15 years later could be perhaps a very interesting uh, practice. Yes. Uh, with uh, so many uh, years of distance and so much more experience accumulated and all that. We can do that, Antonio. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, Antonio, at least we are out of the four, uh, out of the four uh, disciplines, yeah. at least three are very actively pursued by people. Represented here. Mm -hmm. Represented here. Can, can we, as we go, maybe step by step or stage by stage, quarter by quarter, or the whole process. Can we find a conference between these? That what mental was trying to achieve and what morphology was yeah. because we seem to have missed out on those other ones. Yeah, could be that that could be done because uh, that is something that uh, when we had the presentation in in Candaroli of each one of the disciplines, uh, the the masters of the disciplines were asked to explain how is the process of their particular discipline to uh, the others. Uh, and the, of course, you hear something for an hour or half an hour and so then later on you forget and you don't get it absolutely clearly. But I was referring mean, more to re each one to do again their own discipline. Okay, <clears throat> that's better. And Antonio, regarding uh, uh, exercise practice, uh, is there any uh, collective uh, way of uh, doing the practice uh, derived uh, after Silo's departure? I don't know, Baju. I don't know because um, because people tend to talk and to exchange experiences, but uh, but to do practices together of the assesses is. Uh, I think the assessment requires a condition of um, of isolation in uh, in uh, to work. But that's okay. the only way that I have personally worked. Okay. Okay. Making it the collective immediately, the the landscapes of the other one penetrate here and interfere, and there is a factor of external, um, external that compels you to to. To social, to prestige, to, to um, external communication that takes you out from the frequency that the discipline requires. Okay. I was just mentioning that uh, perhaps let's say that you de did morphology. And, no, uh, I, I, I did uh, mental. Mental. Well, if, if, yes. then if, if it's interesting or not to review all the steps of mental, but review them um at the same time uh you personally yes with your own uh, with your own um, process many times many of... times i reviewed the process uh -huh. but uh, uh, at the level of uh, seventh step sixth step uh, or seventh step uh, i am not able to uh, ascend or advance but uh, access is I am following uh, what uh, the uh, the style uh, way of uh, style of life and center of gravity. That's very good. No, that's very good. Mm. Because uh, really, what what propels you in the discipline to to the level of access is okay. Because you have to jump into the if you want into <clears> the <throat> ab abstract of such depth that uh, practically you don't have a clear register of what happened there. It tends to happen okay. after that. It's, it's in the steps 10, 11, and 12 in the last, uh, in the last section of it. Okay. And, uh, and that can trigger that process, even if it's for a very short period of time. Okay. In, in mental discipline is very, very clear because you are trying to, to formulate a, a, a problem of such abstraction okay. that uh, really it pushes you into, into, um, into the void, 
into the node representation because okay. there are no objects that can respond to that, to fill that question. It's interesting. I don't know how it goes in the material or in the, uh, they have different procedures to, to produce something similar. Morphology must be similar. Who, who have done morphology? Yeah. So did. Shailaja uh, did the morphology. Shailaja and Nilesh. Nilesh is also uh, morphology. Central uh, Chaitanya did mental. Yes, sir. Yes. Ajit, Ajit by Ajit by which uh, and, book is of you? Mental. 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 And, yeah, I did. Uh, uh, I did the morphology also. So I you to answer answer your question. You have morphology done the morphology or not? Chaitanya. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you have done them all or not? You did I was them. very curious. I did them all. <laughs> I was very curious. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. So, I mean, it's very, very guilty good. as yeah, yeah. Guilty as charged. So it there is there are those steps uh, where the expansion takes place in the eventual in the eventual three steps. The expansion takes place, and you are there as a dot, and then you escape the dot by into the void. So that is that is in the last uh, three steps where it, in morphology, none morphology. of you remains, and yeah, yeah. After the consolidation is over, uh, like we have in the mental. Um, nah. <laughs> the consolidation that takes place yeah, and then uh, yeah, uh, then we move towards the determinism, determinism of the consciousness and to see the determinism and you know as we go forward like we have a consolidation there's a consolidation here in terms of uh, you becoming a part of the circle and then there's a dot left which is just your little bit eye left and then in, in the end the dot goes away as well and you are just the void and that's yeah. absolutely beautiful yeah no question yeah well those those I imagine states of no representation of no sensation yeah. of no nothing it is a, that is the point of access to the profound no? in, yes. in, in terms of our more specialized experience yes 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 the profound that was actually is my first you uh, would access when there are no uh, uh, representations the eye is no no presence as Paiju was saying in the in the beginning is suspended but you say I will suspend my eye, and, and what do you do? No, no, it doesn't. If, as as soon as itself. you say I will suspend my eye, <laughs> yeah. it's a contradiction, right? It, it never happens. I yes. So, uh, but it's it, it's interesting to take back or to establish contact again with some of those registers, because um, because the questions that we had in this session today, they are very much related to that particular point. And so if we practice a bit in that, I mean, with their own experience and in the own discipline that we have been working with the notes that we still have, probably we would be propelled with the present experience and necessities that we have at this stage in the process that we have more maturity, many more years, we would, uh, maybe refresh those experiences and some of the questions that we are formulating here would find their own answers. Anyway. Andonia, which discipline you practice? Andonia, which, yeah. which discipline you? Mental? Mental, yeah. Yes. I, I work with Yayesh there. That was a wonderful experience to work with Yayesh. No? It's, uh, he, he couldn't finish because at that time he left, but he was so positive and, and, and serious in his approach to everything. It was very nice. Yeah. Mm. So, Antonio, that's uh, Jayesh. Uh, Antonio. We have Emiko joining us. Hello, Emiko. Antonio, whether uh, Silo personally uh, uh, guided uh, you uh, on this uh, mental discipline practice? Um, I was working with um, Alicia. Okay. In the second uh, stage, but uh, because she at that point had not completed the process, really Silo was supervising all the, the masters that were taking disciples so he was there in the in the background because sometimes i was uh, 
I met him again and again because we had, at the time we, we, we had our regular meetings in South America or in, in, in Europe. And so he was describing uh, stages on different steps that I have described to Alicia. And it's clearly that Alicia had reported to him and he was taking some of the indicators and he was mentioning to me later on. So that is very interesting what happened to you in that step particularly of, of walls that fell down, for example, crumbled. I was mm. in, in an enclosure that very solid walls like made of stone or I don't know what, that means that I couldn't find the solution of the problems presented by that particular step. And the representation was that, I mean, the way that that conundrum was represented in, in my head. And at one point, insisting and insisting and formulating and reformulating it, the, the walls of that enclosure start to break down. And when the dust clears, starts to fall and all that, I see a way through which I move and then it, I move really to the next step and I find the indicators or the response to the questions that I had and I couldn't find the indicators before. So it's interesting how the psyche represents a situation and finds a solution with an answer. So extraordinary things happen in the, in the, during the, uh, the, the practices of the disciplines as you may have discovered and that is absolutely great. No? Very interesting. Alicia means Alicia, our uh, Brazilian member. Brazilian? No, she was uh, Argentinian. She is Argentinian. Alicia Ordonez. Oh. She used to live in Italy and a period of time. And yeah. Okay. Because uh, Silo wanted uh, basically uh, to start the work of disciplines with, uh, with women. <coughs> so he, he chose uh, Karen for, yeah. the, uh, for the energetic, Alicia for the intellectual, and um, Mariana for morphology. And Salvatore for the alchemy. Alchemy. Yeah, the, the, the material discipline. A material, yes. Yeah. Because he, he was a biochemist and, uh, and he was um, a, a guy with a lot of process and he has been in the support sector for many years, Salvatore. And well, he had lots of qualities. He didn't have any of the rigidities of the structural members. Hmm. And then he wanted to, to work with a different sort of conditions. Mm. And interesting that also all the males in the movement had to take advice and guidance from uh, females. That was mm. another change of. <laughs> and that was the last stage before coming into school. So it's in, in many ways, allegorically, is a very interesting. Uh, manner of working after all these years and the basically where the guys who were telling how to do and the structures and blah, 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 all that type of thing. <laughs> 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 he was a master in any way that you look at it. No? Yeah. It the, the greatest still, of them all. Eh? Does it still prevail that the females uh, <clears throat> have a little bit of no, because uh, it, it, they are softer. They are, they are, the macho thing was a, a characteristic of the movement in the, in the years to, I don't know, in India, but in, uh, in, in the Western countries, yeah, very, very strongly. No? Yes. And, uh, he, here, in, uh, here in India also, uh, there is a belief because uh, a female can reach very easily into uh, the profound level. You think easier than, than uh, the, the... No, I, 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 uh, I don't know, but I heard many from many people from here also in Kerala. 
so not uh, not from our uh, uh, humanist members there is a uh, spiritual members the Actually, their comments uh, like, in the in the story says uh, gaudami and uh, some female members gargi saum gaudami and many many female members are at, uh, yeah, at that the, that level the, our uh, old and text reveals and lots of the gods have have the 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 they are a synthesis of oh. also sexes huh? oh. hmm. okay friends i think uh, it's nice with this enthusiasm we have uh, gone on for almost 2 hours it's very nice so maybe we can close here and we meet next week same time 